Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, we're back with American History with Mr. Rangel. Today, we're going to continue with our series of Where's the Love? These are Where's the Love notes. Again, we're talking about what happened between uh, the French and Indian War, where we loved England, and 13 years later, where we declare independence. What happened to break up that little uh, relationship we had with Mother England? Well, we learned last time about some of the acts that were... Uh, being passed on us, the laws, the taxes. And so let's continue with uh, part two. Part two. We talked about some of the protest groups in the colonies, Sons of Liberty, and their main leaders, I want to make sure that you know this, Sam Adams, I call him the man with the mouth. He was real good at talking, real good at, at making, um, making speeches and getting people all riled up to go against England. And then there was Paul Revere. I call him the artist, and I'm going to tell you a little later why I call him the artist. But he was also one of the main leaders, and uh, probably the one who, um, who I call the man with the money, John Hancock, was the one who was always there to um, help pay for some of, the, some of the expenses for the Sons of Liberty. So these are the three people that I would like for you to know for the test. Let's go on. So there was an event that happened on March 5th in 1770, they called the Boston Massacre. Massacre, Boston Massacre. What happened was, England had sent a bunch of redcoats over to, to Boston to, to kind of calm things down. After the Stamp Act and the other uh, taxes that were passed, uh, Boston was getting a little bit um, upset, a little tense in the town of Boston. So here these redcoats come over, and there was one building in, in uh, Boston that everybody hated and that was the Customs House, because that was where all the taxes were sent um, for these, these taxes that were, that were given to us by England. So this is the one, one building people didn't like, and there was a, a soldier outside protecting the custom House when some colonists came along and started harassing them, started giving them a hard time, uh, throwing snowballs. It was in the, in the winter time. They were getting really upset and really mad at this soldier, so he decided to call his friends over, and pretty soon you got a big crowd yelling and screaming at these soldiers. All of a sudden, there are shots fired. The uh, story goes that one of the soldiers slipped, fell, and gun went off, and the other soldiers uh, saw that as a sign to fire, and all of a sudden, when the smoke clears, you have five colonists who are dead. Actually, three died at that time, two died later on. But we have five colonists who are dead. Uh, and they call this the Boston Massacre. Now, I told you before that Paul Revere was the artist. I call him the artist. He was a silversmith who would create silver platters and cups and stuff. But he was also good at etching. And what he did, he etched a, uh, uh, an engraving or a painting about the Boston Massacre. He was the one that actually called it the Boston Massacre. And... He did it on purpose. He wanted to call it the Boston Massacre because he wanted to convince people that the English were evil, British were bad. It really wasn't a massacre. Only five people died. It was more like an accident, the Boston accident, they should have called it. But Paul Revere calls it Boston Massacre. Again, he's trying to, trying to um, convince people that the British are bad, uh, are bad people. Let me show you the picture. This is a picture or the engraving that Paul Revere created. And if you notice, it's not that accurate. It's not that accurate. One of the first things you, you see that there's no snow. There's no snow on the ground. Um, and all the colonists are unarmed and they're innocent. They've got women there. Uh, and they're being shot at by these evil-looking uh, red coats. If you look closely, the red coats look like they're smiling. Looks like the the commander is giving the order to fire, which was not accurate. And uh, again, Paul Revere is trying to incite the opinions or, or, or uh, um, get the the people in the in the colonies upset in England by showing this picture. What he does, he engraves it and makes copies of it. And one thing I want to notice, I always saw this and I thought it was kind of strange. And I want you to take a look at the bottom, down the bottom. What do you see? You see a dog. There's a dog in the picture. Paul Revere didn't have to put a dog in the picture. He put a dog in the picture. And what, what was he trying to do with that? I think that Paul Revere put a dog on purpose. Because how evil, 
how evil must the British be that they're even going to shoot at the puppy? They're puppy killers. How evil are these redcoats? And so Paul Revere, again, is trying to affect the opinions of the colonists. And what do we call that? Big P word. That's correct. Propaganda. Propaganda is where you are spreading information to try and influence someone's opinion. And right now, especially if uh, there's a campaign going on for president or for governor or for a Senate seat, you can hear a lot of propaganda on the uh, television. It's still going on today. So what happened with the, the Boston Massacre, uh, these five soldiers go on trial and nobody wants to defend them because you know, they're hated in the colonies because they killed you know, the neighbors and friends. And, but one, one, um, one lawyer decides to take the case and he defends them in court and actually gets them off. They go free because of the efforts of this lawyer. Who was this lawyer? His name was John Adams. Don't got a picture of him, but his name was John Adams, our s future second president. And he happened to be the cousin of Sam Adams, one of the leaders of the Sons of Liberty. So you can imagine what that family reunion was like. And later on, John Adams became one of our greatest patriots and uh, ended up being our second president. So, um, but after the event of the Boston Massacre, things kind of calmed down, settled down. Um, but then we had the next act, the next law, and that was the T Act, 1773. The T Act. This was an act that colonists uh, didn't like because they realized that England was trying to control the colonial economy by um, selling tea straight to the colonists without using colonial middlemen. So basically they were creating a monopoly in the tea market. And the Sons of Liberty realized, hey, if they can do that with the tea market, they can do that with every other market and pretty soon they'll control our economy. And the Sons of Liberty saw this and realized that they got to do something. So what they did, they started boycotting British tea. They stopped buying tea. And uh, this continued, this continued, but then came the big event, the Boston Tea Party. Now, again, December 16, 1773, this was in the middle of winter. Colonists don't want British tea. And in all the colonies, in all the colonies, ships are arriving with this tea, but it's being sent straight back. Ships arrive in port, and the protest groups get out there, and, and they tell the, the captain, hey, we don't want you here. Go on back. We don't want you in, in our colony. So the ships go on back, all except for one port. In one port, the port of Boston, a ship arrives. And this ship is carrying the tea that is sent over from the East India Company, England, to be sold in Boston. Sons of Liberty show up, and they say, we don't want you here, go on back. The name of the ship was called the Dartmouth. And so the ship shows up, Sons of Liberty say, go on back, and the captain tells me, I can't go back until I get permission or approval or confirmation from the governor. The governor of Massachusetts has to tell me to go back, and I'll head on back. So who was the governor at this time? The governor in... Um, the colonies at this time was a man by the name of Hutchinson, Thomas Hutchinson, and there's his picture. Now Thomas Hutchinson was the, the new governor. He had just got the job. He just got the job. He was a new governor, and Sons of Liberty told him, Governor Hutchinson, you need to tell the ship captain to take the tea and head on back to England. Well, Governor Hutchinson didn't want to um, be pushed around. Didn't want to be pushed around. He's the governor, brand new governor. He didn't want to look bad in the eyes of England, and to have a bunch of these troublemakers, Sons of Liberty, telling him what to do is not a good, good uh, way to start his new job. So he tells the Boston um, protesters there, the Sons of Liberty, no, the ship stays. And the Sons of Liberty said, no, 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 the ship's got to go back. And Hutchinson said, no, I'm the governor, the ship stays. And this went on and on and on. And finally, there came a day when. By law, the ship had to be unloaded. Well, before that day arrives, a bunch of Sons of Liberty got all dressed up as Mohawk Indians, climbed aboard a boat, and started throwing tea over the side. And they called this 
the Boston Tea Party. Over, um, over $15,000 worth of tea is destroyed. So $15,000 worth of British property is destroyed by a bunch of these uh, Sons of Liberty, these troublemaking Bostonians who want to uh, make a statement, make a protest. And when England finds out about it, they are mad, mad at Boston. And that's when it all begins. England is mad at Boston and decides to punish the little town. Now, I've always said if Hutchinson had said, take the ship and send it back to, to England, we wouldn't have had the Boston Tea Party and we wouldn't have had the punishment that England sent on us. And it was that punishment that uh, caused all the colonies to pay attention and get united. Up until now, the, 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 the colonies were separated, but when they realized how England was punishing Boston because of the Boston Tea Party, they got united against England, and this was the beginning and eventually led to our independence. So Hutchinson, even though he's not real famous, he's not one of our you know, uh, patriots, he had as big of an effect on causing our independence as any of the great leaders that we celebrate today. His decision to allow the ship to stay and not send it back to England caused us to get united. And we're gonna learn more about that in our next segment. So uh, pay attention, hang on, study, get ready for the next section. It'll be coming real soon. Until then, this is Mr. Rangel. Have a good day, goodbye.